Y'all know on this channel, I am all about quick and easy budget-friendly DIYs and the projects in today's video are just that. All the projects today are less than $5 each and are part of a playlist and I'll tell you more about that in just a bit. But first, let's make something cute. My name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. For DIY number one, I'm just taking this thick wood round that I got from Dollar Tree and taking off the jute hanger. Now I always save that kind of stuff because I figure I can use it later for another project. I also always remove the stickers as well. I just use my little blade thingy, I forget the official name for it, but to I use that to try and scrape it off. And sometimes I have to use my heat gun if they are stubborn like this one is. And remember, if you don't have a heat gun, you can always use like a hair dryer and that'll work too. I just heat it up for a few seconds to warm up that adhesive and then I use that blade thingy to scrape it off. Now take some craft paper and I trace out the wood round on it. I cut it out and then I apply a good amount of glue onto the wood round. I often use Mod Podge, but today I'm just using a glue stick. The craft paper has the word love written all over it. I got it from Hobby Lobby and it's the same paper I used on another project and I think it's so pretty. I just use, put the paper on top and then I flip it over and press it down to make sure the paper is adhering to the glue and the glue to the wood and all that kind of stuff. I have a finger sander and I'm just using that to sand off the paper from around the wood round to give it a clean edge. I got mine I think from Lowe's, but instead of a finger sander, you could use a block sander or just a piece of uh, the sandpaper, and you can get those from Dollar Tree too. And I'm embellishing it with this wood word that I got from Dollar Tree. It came in a pack of I think six pieces, and they all said love. A couple were pink, a couple were natural wood, and a couple were red, and as you can see, I'm hot gluing one of the red ones to the wood round. I'm not quite done with this wood round and Captain is now helping me. Because I like double-sided projects, I'm gonna do a second side and we'll call this DIY number 1A. <laughs> so I took some more craft paper, this time with little black hearts and repeated the process of applying it to the wood round. I embellished it with a small red felt heart and that was it. This is how it turned out. The wood round was $1.25, although to be honest, I think I bought mine when it was still like a dollar, but you're, if you're buying it today to recreate it, it's gonna be a buck 25. The scrapbook paper I got on sale, so I believe it was 35 cents, and the wood words were $1.25 for the package. For the second part of DIY number one, oh wait, hang on, we're calling it DIY number one A. Anyway, the heart was part of a bag of felt hearts that were $1.25, and of course you'll have stuff left over to use for another project. I already had the paint and glue, so this DIY is about $4.50 to make both sides. This video is part of the five under $5 challenge. It's always so much fun to join my friends Missy from Crafty Co DIY and Emily from Farm Charm Chic. And today's guest host is Ellie from DIY From House to Home. The link to all of their channels as well as to the playlist is gonna be in the description box below. I hope you'll check it out and see what other fun things you can make for under $5. This is a Dollar Tree sign that I'm using for DIY number two, and I removed the embellishment on the back and painted it white. I was actually gonna use this for the notebook paper sign DIY that I did recently, but it wasn't large enough. I did have this pack of wood hearts from Dollar Tree and I decided to do a simple heart sign. I started arranging the hearts and then I thought that the natural wood hearts weren't quite the right color, so I decided to paint them in the color Barely Pink by Folk Art. To attach the hearts to the sign, I'm just using my glue gun. And did you know that you can get glue guns at Dollar Tree? You sure can. I'm gluing down the bottom red hearts first and then I'm gluing one of the Barely Pink hearts on top to give me a guide for spacing. Then I take the deeper pink hearts and position them in the middle, hot glue them down, and then I take the other barely pink heart and hot glue it down as well. And this is the quote unquote back of the sign, which used to be the front. I like to finish up my projects when I can, so I'm gonna cover this with brown craft paper that I got from Dollar Tree. I just measure it, cut it out, and use a glue stick to glue it down. 
I then trim the sides and then I pop it back into the frame. It's kind of, I was going to paint the frame, but I didn't because it's that glossy feeling kind of frame. Anyway, that's it to this DIY. This ombre heart sign turned out so cute and it's super budget friendly. The sign was $1.25, the hearts were in a pack for $1.25, and I already had the paint, glue sticks, and brown craft paper on hand. So, speaking of that brown craft paper, which you don't actually need, but if you get it, it's $1.25 for a decent sized roll that will definitely last you through a lot of projects. So my cost for this project was $2.50, which is not bad considering how pretty it is. I really love connecting with all of y'all and the links to my Instagram, my Our Gray House Facebook, as well as my craft group, Crafty DIYs on a Budget, it's going to be in the description box below. This is another Dollar Tree sign. I peeled off the front and was just going to paint it red on the inside, like not all the way to the edges, but I wanted kind of like an unfinished look. But I noticed that where I peeled the paper, the surface is uneven. Like, not uneven, like, level, but the color was uneven, so I painted it red all over. Then I took a scrap piece of craft paper and cut it to the size of the sign. My first idea was to wet the edges and then kind of rip it or tear it away to get that raw edge look I was wanting, but it wasn't really working, so I just ended up just tearing it. I'm taking my trusty glue stick again and applying glue to both the sign and the paper. I could have used Mod Podge, but you have to be careful when you're using it because you have to use it sparingly or it gets too wet and then it just makes a mess. I know most people have glue sticks at home, as do I, and the glue sticks dry faster. So once I added the glue, I then positioned that paper on the sign and pressed it down. I use my Cricut for a lot of projects and I love it, but I wanted to show you that you can also create beautiful things without it. So with the pencil, I'm lightly sketching on the letters XO, XO to make sure I like where they are. Now I'm going back over those letters with a black Sharpie marker, but the line wasn't thick enough. So I go back with a thick black paint pen and just retrace those letters. Next, I'm taking some jute twine and hot gluing one end and then wrapping it around, I think five or six times across the top. I hot glue the other end and then snip off the excess. I made a simple shoestring bow, or I don't know what you call it. Is it a shoelace bow? Anyway, it's the kind of bow that you do when you're tying your shoes. And so I hot glue that to the top left corner. This sign is so cute and I love how it turned out. Just goes to show you that you can make really cute decor on a budget. The sign was $1.25, the craft paper I had on hand, but you can get some at Hobby Lobby for 35 cents. And I had jute twine and Sharpie mark on hand, but you can also get those at Dollar Tree for $1.25 each. So total for the project was $1.25 for me, but you could recreate this for a little over $4. I saw this sign at Hobby Lobby and I thought it was really pretty and I wanted to see if I could recreate it for this project. I had this piece of, not even sure what it is, but it's one of those backings to a shelf. I think it was from my cubby shelf that sits behind me and I never put those on and I just kind of kept it because I figured I could use it for another project and here we are. So I took some balsa wood and started to cut out the front of the arches and you can cut balsa wood with scissors or with a craft knife. Just be careful when you do it because it can splinter. And I'd cut the original piece of backing shelf down the middle and decided that wasn't the best route to go. So I took another piece and I'm just painting it with Rust-Oleum's chalk, ultramat paint in the color charcoal. And I'm also wearing gloves because I have a manicure and I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> then I took the pieces of balsa wood that are going to be my frame and I stained them front and back with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. There's not much left in this container and I had added some water to kind of further dilute it. I painted it on and used a wet rag to wipe it off. And I'm recreating a piece and um, I had a pic of it so I printed it out and I used some carbon paper to trace on the wording. I could have used my Cricut but again I really like to show y'all that there are different ways to create beautiful things on a budget. Also. I didn't realize Captain had bumped my camera. So. 
I took a fine tipped white paint pen and just retraced over the wording that I traced onto the sign. It's really easy to do. And then I th took a thicker white paint pen and retraced the printed words because I felt like they needed to stand out just a bit more, but I left the words in cursive as they were. I then assembled the frame. I took the stained balsa wood and started hot gluing them in place around the sign. And if I were to do this project over, I would cut out the top piece, the two arches, as one on the balsa wood instead of two separate pieces. But other than that, I'm really loving how this is turning out. I then take my scissors and my cutting blade to trim away the excess material to finish out this piece. I was originally going to use tumbling tower blocks to make a stand so the sign could stand on its own, but that didn't work. So remember, that piece of jute twine that I'd cut off the wood around in DIY number one? Well, I'm using that as a hanger for this sign. I think this turned out so beautiful. While I really like the larger inspiration piece, I absolutely love this mini version. So I already had the paint, paint pens, and the sign material. The only thing I purchased was the balsa wood and it was less than $3 for the large piece. I have a good amount left over too. You could use cardboard for the sign, so this could really be an inexpensive thing to recreate. Okay, last DIY for today's video. Well, actually, I have a super quick bonus DIY at the end, but this is the end of my official video. And one thing that I do not like about Dollar Tree signs is that they have glitter on them. So I scraped off as much as I could and used my ladybug vacuum to try and clean it up. I just love this little vacuum thingy. I then started to try to peel off the rest of the sign. This is actually going to be the back of the sign, but I try to finish out my stuff as much as I can. I put on gloves and I'm using folk art paint in the color Intense Black and I started painting the inside of the back of the sign which will now be the front. For the frame I'm using Anita's acrylic paint in brown and I'm just going around the edges. I kind of sort of wish I'd done a lighter color but I still think it looks nice. I used a pencil to trace out the wording and then went back over with a fine tipped um, white paint pen. And then I used my thicker white paint pen to go over the letters again. And to finish it off, I am just hot gluing a simple buffalo check bow on the top. Y'all, this turned out so cute. It's just another example that you don't have to have a Cricut to make cute things. And this only cost me $1.25 since I had the paint and the ribbon and the paint pens. So it's a real deal for such a cute sign. Okay, bonus time, bonus DIY time. The, okay, so this little mason jar is from Dollar Tree and the material is a scarf, it's also from Dollar Tree. I cut out two circles out of the material and then I hot glued them to the top of the lid. And I added some hot tamales candy to the jar and then wrapped jute twine around the top of the lid. The only thing I purchased was the mason jar and the scarf, but if you had to purchase everything, you'd be right at $5. This is a cute little DIY that you could easily change out for each season and holiday during the year. There you have it, five Valentine, well actually seven Valentine DIYs that are affordable and budget friendly. They are all under $5 each and they are so easy and quick to make. You can recreate these and enjoy them in your own home. So thank y'all so much for joining me today. I'm linking some videos that you might enjoy in the corners. Don't forget there's a playlist linked in the description box. And if you want to follow me over on Instagram or here on YouTube, it's Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.